Why don't we just agree to disagree? Yeah, that's really going to fly. Well, that's a good question. No, 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 no. Listen, that's exactly the point I wanted to make. Summer is no vacation if you're one of the estimated 10.8% of Brooklynites without a job. It's hard out there, but once you've polished your resume, practiced your best handshake, and aced the interview, you might fail the credit check. This is Intersect, and today we're talking about what's keeping you from getting your next job. I'm joined by Yako Boren, the Program Director at Brooklyn Restoration Plaza in bed -Stuy and Nicole Salk, a senior staff attorney at South Brooklyn Legal Services. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. you. So the numbers are pretty startling. 10.8%, uh, not million, thank God. 10.8% of Brooklynites uh, don't have jobs right now, and that's only second in the city after the Bronx, which has something astronomical like 14%. So what does that percentage translate into for real families and on the ground numbers in Brooklyn? Well, it's actually, it's actually even worse in, in certain areas of Brooklyn and yeah. sp even specific blocks. Some blocks, you know, they know uh, uh, unemployment percentage of like over 25 percent. So it's really, it's really very dire in certain areas, right? So, and what it means is that more and more people not being able to find work and being unemployed mm -hmm. and um, so more competition in the market. So what it means is you just have to be really ready to find employment, deal with any issues that you have or barriers, you know, deal with them and make sure that you, you know, that you nail that job. Yeah, I heard, uh, I recently read a number where they said for every open job in the city mm -hmm. that there are at least three people looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So that's stiff competition mm -hmm. for a dwindling number of jobs that are out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are some of the more common barriers to people getting a job even before credit checks come into play? Mm -hmm. So um, it can be a, a, a home situation, you know, if you have children, mm -hmm. you don't have anybody to uh, take care of your children. Right. Uh, it can also be criminal background, um, um, age, um, what have you, uh, other household situations. It can be a medical situation or a disability. So there are a lot of, you know, things in the way of for a lot of people to to find work and you know be really competitive so Nicole we just heard Yako mention kids if you don't have access to child care mm -hmm. that's a personal issue that mm -hmm. a lot of people in Brooklyn have to contend with mm -hmm. and also just the simple fact of having a criminal background that you have to check off that little box which is currently still the law mm -hmm. and these are issues that right. people deal with because of sort of life choices or situations right. they've been in but he also mentioned age, which is something no one can control. You're all going to get older, but right. that's illegal. Right. Well, it's also, I mean, age, there's lots of things that are illegal in terms of discrimination, age, yeah. race, um, gender, um, sexuality in New York City and New York State. Um, and actually, many times um, employers are denying folks who have criminal records jobs, and, and it can be in some instances illegal for them to do so. And so people should be aware that if they have um, criminal criminal records, uh, criminal conviction history, that right. there may be some things that they can do to try to make it less of a barrier for them to get mm -hmm. employment. Yeah. Um, they have to definitely um, reveal that if they're right. asked uh, on an application, although they cannot be asked about... Um, the specific... About, they can't be asked about arrests that aren't currently pending. Okay. If you're asked a question about arrests that's not currently pending, that's an illegal question. And that's something, frankly, we would we would want to know about um, in our office because it's, so I'm it's sorry. Does that mean that if I checked something to say, have you ever been convicted or something, they can't ask me what I did? No, but if you're asked specifically just about an arrest, mm -hmm. um, that's an illegal question unless it's it, unless it's a question that says a pending arrest, arrest okay. that hasn't resulted in some kind so of conclusion. So you're applying for a job now, but they could cart you away next week. That's the only That's instance? okay. They can ask you about that. Okay. They can definitely ask you about any kind of criminal conviction. That's completely legal. Um, what they can't do is, in many instances, depending upon the type of job, they can't just straight out deny you a job based on your criminal conviction history. So we encourage people to be honest because, frankly, if they're asking the question, they're doing the background check, right. they're going to find out about it anyway. And if you don't tell the truth, that yeah. in itself is a reason to be denied a job. If you have a criminal conviction history, 
Um, you want to see if there's any way that you can get something called a certificate of relief or a certificate of good conduct, which is only something you can get in New York State and only uh, relates to New York State employ uh, employment in New York State, either private or uh, public employers. Right. Um, but those are things that if you had a certificate of relief or a certificate of good conduct, it doesn't erase the criminal conviction. You still need to reveal it. Right. But if you have that, you want to give a copy of that to the employer or let the employer know that you, the potential employer, know that you have that because it creates what's known as a legal presumption of rehabilitation, okay. which makes it less of a barrier in terms of yes. getting employment. So if it's already super competitive, that might just be the little edge right. that you need to say right. this person completed what they were mandated to do and furthermore got a certificate to say I was sort of a model. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's, it is given by the court or by parole, and it just yeah. means that um, for that particular crime you have been rehabilitated. doesn't mean that the employer can not deny you, right. but there are, but it creates what's known as a legal presumption of rehabilitation. It means that you have been rehabilita rehabilitated. And it's also really how you answer the question, right? It's, it, it's, you just have to be prepared in answering the question because you just have to expect that it comes up. So, uh, you know, um, and that's also one of the things that we assist people with, you know, in, in uh, that's the restoration corporation. So we do, do help people that come in. You know, how do you deal with these kinds of situations? Right. What do you do need to do to prepare? Uh, uh, don't lie about it, but make sure that you uh, answer it, you know, in a way that is, is really acceptable and, um, you know, for also for the position, yeah. Because as Nicole said, it's going to come out. So if you yeah. are the one who bring it up, you get to frame it in right. a way that, that puts you, in a you strong strong position, right? instead of having to make an excuse, and you can make defensive, an explanation. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Tip number one. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> in the open, I just spoke about this whole notion that people are now running credit checks on people who are applying for jobs. And there's another figure that said now 60% of employers are doing this, where in the 90s it was 20% of prospective applicants had to pass a credit check or just subject to it, whether you passed it or not, they ran the thing. Mm -hmm. So. It's more competitive. Once again, over half of the jobs are looking at your credit history. Is this legal? It's legal if you give permission. And in most cases, if you're applying for a job, you're going to give permission for yes. them to I'm to not it. doing a credit check. But there yeah. are certain things that um, are not legal. So um, they, can, they can deny you a job based on your credit history. Right. Um, on, uh, there is pending legislation, both at the city council, the state level, and the federal level to change that, to make it illegal. Right, right now it's legal. What they can't do is if they deny you the job based on the credit history, they have to let you know that they're that that's the reason you have yeah. to be aware, and they have to give you a, a copy of the credit report so you can see if it's accurate. In many instances, I know that you guys work on that, um, your credit report isn't accurate, and there's something mm -hmm. you can do about that to try to, um, one, correct the inaccuracies, and two, um, if there are things that you can do to make your credit report better, there are ways to work on that and make it and improve that. Yeah. So I know you are working with people on a daily basis yeah, who are in exactly. process to getting their jobs. Is this something that you've heard back yeah, from that population? Yeah, so that's, that's what we, uh, so besides the, the, the job readiness part, you know, getting prepared for your job, we also do financial counseling. Right. And then anybody who comes in, uh, we pull a free credit report for them. I mean, it's, I uh, guess, tip number two, you know, yeah. know your credit score. Right. Taking my job, <laughs> I need another job now. There's no security. Okay, so, so know your credit score. Yeah, so you have to. You just have to know your credit score. And and as you say, in many you know many times there's there are things on there that are not supposed to be on there. Mm -hmm. You know, even mistakes. And um, so we assist in, in taking those off. We me mediate on behalf of the client. Not no no legal right. representation, but we just can you know to the credit yeah, reporting right, agencies. Right. Yeah. So um, we do that, and also counseling and coaching. Because sometimes there are also items on the credit report that, you know, like bad loans or something. Yeah. So we help also with that, you know, uh, uh, debt issues, um, increasing your savings, uh, just improving your credit score overall right. and placing you in a better position. Uh, because even if there are laws, you know, to prevent employers from... Uh, pulling credit scores, it will happen, and yeah. and um, you mentioned that mentioned that also uh, that oftentimes the employer won't even let you know why they you got denied, and it might be based on the credit score, right? So 
you just, again, you have to be prepared. So when just my knee-jerk reaction, when I heard about credit scores and job applications, I thought, okay, if you're like a CFO, you're responsible for managing a company's money. Mm -hmm. If you are in some kind of position where you're writing checks or clearing things and you have a problem with your own money, that might be something helpful to know. But that's all 60% of jobs can be people managing money. What kind mm -hmm. of jobs are we seeing? What are, are we talking about CEO level things? Or is it just a wider spread than that? Um, so it, it's, I think it's wider spread. So I don't know specifically which employers do pull credit, uh, credit reports. Um, but it's wider. I think also, on, you know, uh, cashiers, for example, they probably pull credit supports for that. Anybody who probably deals with money directly, mm -hmm. um, I think those employers, they will do that. Uh, but also, I mean, I understand from the employer's point of view, they want to hire the best person possible for the position, right? right? So they will do anything to find out uh, anything about the person, which includes a credit score. But then I think it's sort of, for, for most positions, almost any position out there, it's not necessary to do that because all, in a way I think it also criminalizes people because so what ha so what if you have you have you know defaulted on your loan right, right? Uh, it might be because you were employed unemployed for a long time or it might be you had to pay a medical bill right. you know so the only way to overcome this is actually have work yeah. and so the credit board is in the way of you finding work you know, you can't, you know, you're getting more, catch right? So what do you do? So I think it's really also important for the employers to know that they can work with uh, um, organizations um, such as uh, South Brooklyn Legal Services and Bedstead Restoration Corporation mm -hmm. to really help resolve those issues, you know, on a community level, um, you know, because the, the, the services that we provide are not just for people seeking employment, but they're also for the employer you know, if employers um, have staff with, you know, that have, for example, right. financial if financial issues or challenges, you know, we can also assist them, and then those people will be able to remain in the job. So it has like a, a benefit for the employer. They don't have to hire new people. people. They can retain people. Recruitment. Yeah. It's, it's it's expensive. You know, right. training, fi selection, training, recruiting. It's really expensive for the employer. So. Um, I would say that just look, let's just work together and you know figure this out. So Nicole, if you are putting in applications everywhere and you're lucky enough, like <laughs> I said, to ace the interview, do all that stuff, and then you get the let down that you in fact don't get the job, how do you know that you have experienced discrimination based on any of those factors okay. from age to race? Right, so it's, it's hard um, because often they don't tell you. Um, in New York, if you have a criminal record, you actually have the right to get that information from the employer um, under Section 754 of the Correction Law. And we do this for a lot of our clients who've been denied jobs who we suspect that that's the reason. Yeah. Um, we will help them or either tell them to write the letter or write the letter on their behalf and say, you know, our, um, our client has a criminal record. You know, why did you deny him um, a job? And um, sometimes we get responses, especially. <laughs> what does that look like? Because I would love to walk out of the interview after they gave me the boot and say, what did I do well, wrong? Well, we, we, we tend to, the, the places we tend to sue actually are um, government agencies. And the reason, our, reason is because they tend to actually, believe it or not, tell you the reason. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of private employers, and we know private employers are denying people based on their criminal records and for other illegal reasons, yeah. um, but they don't always tell you. Yeah. And you don't always know. Um, but cr but government agencies will tell you, and yeah. sometimes they'll tell you things that we think are not that we don't think that's a legal reason, and we sue them yeah. if we don't think it's a legal reason. Because someone, um, if you have a criminal conviction, uh, you can't necessarily automatically be denied. You ha there has to be a connection between the job right. um, and the conviction, um, or there has to be a very serious uh, public safety reason why you're being denied. And in many instances, it's not there. So most of the cases that you deal with at uh, South, Brooklyn, South Brooklyn Legal, do they involve age discrimination or is it mostly racial or convictions from former crimes? 
So we have a reentry employment project, so that's something that we focus on. Okay. Uh, we focus on criminal conviction um, employment discrimination. Um, we do different kinds of um, employment cases based on wage and hour violations. We also do a lot of unemployment benefits as well in our office. Yeah. So one other barrier that I've found is the sort of social media spotlight mm -hmm. that people seem to be talking a lot about lately. Are people really mining Facebook when it comes to getting a new job? It's a little bit, you know, uh, gray, but um, I think that, again, you have to be, especially with Facebook and the social media, just be careful what you put out there. Um, because employers will look for it so they might you know might find information that you don't want to be revealed before an interview yeah. right and that they might want to ask they might ask you about um, yeah so but again it's it's not necessarily illegal in fact in most cases it's probably legal because that's public information so mm -hmm. I agree that you probably need to be really careful what you yeah. put out there if you're looking for a job and mm -hmm. make sure you take down stuff that you don't want yeah. out there a potential yeah. employer you <laughs> see. so this is one of these catch-22 situations uh, that has also made news recently we know in New York City's council is fighting uh, against or they have the potential to change the law about background checks mm -hmm. and there's pending federal litiga litigation but in the news recently there's been a lot about the uh, don't apply if you are unemployed mm -hmm. the unemployed need not apply for this job they're only looking for people who have work to work right. and yeah I mean we haven't I haven't seen a lot of that but I do know that it's definitely out there and I think that potentially also is illegal because it has a disproportionate effect on black and Latino uh, folks who who may have because of the economic downturn been more um, you know more likely to be unemployed we yeah. know that the, the unemployment rate is much higher in those communities right. and so under federal law actually and the EEOC which is the federal equal employment opportunity commission that that enforces the you know the um, discrimination laws they've taken a real interest in this in this issue um, because of the disparate impact that it has on those communities and so for sure if that is you know um, if an employer is saying we're not going to look at you if you've been out for more than a year it's completely unfair and um, if you're a member of one of those communities and that's happened to you that's something that you should definitely you know either contact us or, or contact the EEOC to make a complaint because it may very well be illegal depending on the circumstances. Well it just seems so difficult because you don't often find out why you didn't get a job and you can have these sort of sneaky mm -hmm. suspicions mm -hmm. that I've been out of work for a while so this Probably. doesn't look good. So what are some of the strategies for people who have been sort of this long term unemployed if mm -hmm. you've been if your job is looking for a job mm -hmm. and you haven't been successful in the last twelve months, how do you shape your resume and the impression so it doesn't make it seem like you've been sitting around just mm -hmm. waiting for a job to fall out of the sky when you've been working at trying to get work. Yeah, yeah. I mean if you're at this point and you're unemployed, let's say for half a year or a year or, yeah. or longer, of course you cannot do anything about that because, you know, you can we cannot go back in the past but what you do have to have your story straight yeah. you know you do need to you do have to, you know don't start complaining about nobody wants to hire me you know because you know nobody you don't they don't want to hear that but you have to have a story about that right and then also uh, moving forward make sure that you keep working on your resume if you don't have work now you have time right so start volunteering do an internship you yeah. know make sure that you're involved be involved in your community do something you know, don't sit at home uh, doing nothing, but get out there, right? And it's, it's, it's really not that hard, but, you know, but it, it is hard. I mean, if you have children at home, you know, you, right. you don't always have, I'm just, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, but it's... But it, there are opportunities there are for opportunities. involvement at lots of different levels in the community. Definitely, yeah. Even if it's just your block association, <laughs> yeah. take a leadership role or right. do something. It's yeah. something you can put... Yeah. Or help out a neighbor, you know, just, you know, do shopping for an, an elderly neighbor or something, you know, just, but anything that just helps to, uh, to, to, you know, to be more, more, again, more competitive in the, in the market, yeah. So we talked about the, just the numbers, that 10.8 for Brooklyn, but as Nicole and you hinted at the, in the earlier part of the show, 
those numbers sort of vary by neighborhood mm -hmm. and definitely uh, by race. So what is your sort of, if there is such a thing, typical client walking in the door at restoration? What are some of the more common sort of barriers to employment that you're seeing there? So, um, well, we, we provide a lot of different services. And so, uh, but so all, we have also arts and culture, we have weatherization programs, and we do business supports as well, so business development. Um, but specifically for workforce and asset building, and th I think that's what we're mostly talking about, is that um, we do get a lot of uh, people coming in with housing issues. Mm -hmm. um, so they're in, in homeless shelters or staying with friends. So that's that's what we see a lot. Um, and it is usually um, um, not, I think between 35, 45, we see that a lot, uh, but also younger people. Uh, nowadays, we also see more and more, before it was people long-term unemployed. Right or entry level, you know, they just came out of school um, or they don't have, you know, they don't have a, a GED or high school diploma, but they're young and started to look for work. Uh, but now more and more we see people that have recently, you know, been, um, what is it, relief, released from a job or, you know, fired um, and they're looking, they have college degrees and so they're starting to look for, for work as well. And then and driving out the people that are, have been looking for entry level positions, you know, long term employed. So. Um, yeah. What are some of, Nicole, in your work, in you sort of get to interface with employers, usually when legal action might mm -hmm. be coming, but what are some of the expectations that you've seen, like if you do meet someone who says this is the reason why, or you get those sort of letters back, what are some employer expectations that they may think they're following their standards, but it may be walking a thin line between being illegal? Right, so um, sometimes employers think that, um, you know, sometimes you may have a national employer who may not understand New York law, for example, because New York law is, is more protective and more uh, protective of discrimination against criminal convictions, so they may not, that may be a problem. Um, you know, we do a lot of unemployment cases, so yeah. I don't always see necess I see a lot of bad employers. Yeah. I'm not always, sh um, it's not always clear to me. And again, we su sue a lot of government agencies. So when you say unemployment cases, mm -hmm. does that mean someone who's been fired and they're trying to sue uh, their former employer to get those benefits? Yeah, they're just trying to get the benefits that they, um, they're just government benefits, they're unemployment benefits. Right. And so we're seeing, like, we go to administrative hearings, okay. and that's where they've been they've lost their jobs for various different reasons all right so Yako what kind of jobs are out there where are your people going what kind of growth are you seeing from the ground level with people actually applying and having success um, so what well our, our, our strong suit is with um, we do a lot of uh, security and construction retail food mm -hmm. Um, but we also clo work, work closely with city agencies like Workforce One right. to um, make sure that we also can assist the people that are looking for the, you know, the higher level or you know, the, the more college degree positions. Um, so yeah, but you know, it's, it, it's, it, it is kind of hard out there. Um, and, but there is also, there is work out there. So yeah. it's, not, you know, it's not hopeless and that's also what I want to have you know let everybody know it's it's really not hopeless and um, it's just you have to work on it right so not to put you on the spot or anything mm -hmm. but in the beginning we sort of made the premise that we tell you why you're not why you're having trouble getting your next job so what are the top sort of five mistakes that people are making I'm gonna ask you oh that are banning <laughs> you or holding up your progress and getting a job. And then for you, it's <laughs> so you can be thinking about it, is listening to the sort of five barriers. How can people know if it's them or if there's a problem that they might get some help in okay. or there might be a legal mm -hmm. issue? So you're on the spot now. What are people doing right now that they should stop doing so they could get that job? So okay, number one, be on time, mm -hmm. right? That's what a lot of uh, actually 
What a lot of time that we oh you just want the five points right I'm so sorry no oh, you can elaborate <laughs> a little okay. have five minutes left <laughs> so okay well, so what a lot of employers tell us you know okay they did great on their interview and you know their resume looks formidable yeah but they are showing up late for work right or they had their certain attitudes at work or certain so that's number I think it's number one be on time you know be on time always you know. Uh, and um, number two is, you know, for an interview, of course, dress properly, um, have your resume in order, you know, make sure that it's up to date, no sp spelling errors, um, and, um, you know, prepare the, prepare the questions. You know what kind of questions they will be asking. There are always some, some surprise questions, but in general, you will know what kind of questions they're asking. So just be prepared with the answers. Yeah. So, yeah. So really, tell us, what are your <laughs> weak spots? What could you work harder on? What I can work harder <laughs> on, yeah. Don't answer <laughs> that. That's always the question. <laughs> They're always things so that I can work So if you've done yeah. those things, if you're on time, you've got the right attitude, you wore a clean shirt, and it just doesn't seem to connect, is there something or a resource that people can go to if they just have questions and it just doesn't feel right to see if there is yeah. a legal issue? I mean, sometimes people are told, you know, oh, you know, you're too old. Mm. or we don't hire people of your age. You can't do that. Um, that's important information and you should be complaining about that. That's age discrimination. Or if you're told, um, well, you're, you're getting the job pending your criminal background, um, your criminal background investigation and you don't get the job, yeah. definitely contact in, in a, a lawyer and see if there's any kind of case that can be brought. Um, because I think it's important not just for the individual who it's happening to, but to make sure that it doesn't happen to other people. Um, I think people need to make sure they enforce their rights whenever they can. Awesome. So I'm just going to ask you as we wrap up to share your contact information so people out there who are seeking a job can take part in some of the great services mm -hmm. that you offer. So we are located at uh, bed Restoration Corporation. It's Restoration Plaza on Fulton Street between uh, Brooklyn and New York Avenue. And um, the phone number is 718-636-6994. If you want to call for an appointment, or you can also drop by. Um, that's it. All right, South yeah. Brooklyn Legal Services. So, if you have either a problem getting unemployment benefits, or if you think that you may be a victim of employment discrimination, or have some other uh, kind of employment problem, you should call 718 237. 5516 on Tuesdays or Thursdays. That's when our hotline is open, and you can leave a message and someone will call you back. Well, thank you both for being here. I'm sure that our viewers can use that information, and we wish you the best of luck on your job search. I'd like to thank my guest, Yako Boren, the Program Director for Workforce and Asset Building at Brooklyn uh, Restoration Plaza in bed -Stuy, and Nicole Salk, a Senior Staff Attorney at South Brooklyn Legal Services. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Mm -hmm.